Well, I just got back from vacation and I'm broke. So I thought, what better time to go to Harbor Freight? See, I've never been to Harbor Freight, so I have no idea what's inside that store. So I took a trip to my local Harbor Freight and bought a few things. Let me show you what I found and my impressions of Harbor Freight. So the only reason that I haven't been to a Harbor Freight before is because there's no Harbor Freight near me. The closest one is about 20 miles away and it's just not convenient for me. So there's a barrage of videos out there that talk about how horrible Harbor Freight is or the great deals you can get there. So I wanted to check this out for myself. Now it was a cold, wet and rainy day the day that I went there. And if anything, I was just wanting to get out of the rain and warm up for a bit. One of the first things that I did when I arrived was to go browse the power tools. And I came to realize that they really only promote two brands of tools, the Hercules and the Bauer. Now I wasn't quite impressed with the prices on these as these were very comparable to tools like Ryobi. Now since it was cold and wet outside, I decided to browse every single aisle of this store. So I checked out almost everything, except for the lawn and garden equipment. The first aisle that I checked, however, was the woodworking aisle. So let's go take a look and I'll show you what I saw. Surprisingly, when I browsed this aisle, I did find a lot of hand planes. I also found some wooden mortising gauges as well as a lot of measuring devices. There were also a lot of different types of squares. There was combination squares as well as metal squares. Another unique thing that they had was actual plastic squares, which I've never used. The next thing that I wanted to take a look at was the hardware area. I was hoping this might be my go-to place to get screws, nuts, and bolts. However, I was quite disappointed with their selection. Most of these items came in small quantity or were in combination packaging. That way you really couldn't get a whole lot of one size if you wanted to. To me, it seems the main reason they have these combination sets is people go in there without an idea of exactly what they want, so they give you a variety of different options to choose from. Next up, I thought I'd take a look at their drill bits, and this is once again a section that I was quite unimpressed with. The only thing that I found that might be useful are these Forstner bits. Now from the videos I've seen about Harbor Freight, most people talk about it's a great place to get consumables, like sandpaper or masks. Now for sandpaper, I didn't find a whole lot I was particularly impressed by. I did find a lot of triangular sandpaper, which is something that I really don't use that often. I will say, however, I was particularly impressed with the PPE. They seem to have masks, respirators, and everything else you might need. Now as I did wander down the aisles, I did find one thing that really caught my eye. Let's go take a look at it. So this is the workbench that caught my eye. Now I assume this is meant to imitate a Soberg's workbench. However, that thing wasn't made out of solid wood. That was laminated wood. Now if you treat your workbench anything like I treat mine, that thing's gonna be beat up before you know it. But right next to that bench were some things that I was impressed with, and that's storage units. Now I probably would have purchased a few of these storage units, however, I'm not quite ready to make that upgrade, as I still need to do a lot of organization in my shop. Now if you Google deep like I have for storage units, you know that storage units like this can cost an arm and a leg. However, this one was just for $169, which was a real deal. There's also a lot of hardware storage, like this one here, or this clear one right here. There's also smaller versions of the big rack we just saw, as well as nice wall mount racks. Saying racks just reminded me of a restaurant that I used to love as a kid, and that's Racks Roast Beef. Leave a comment if you've ever heard of this chain. So now that I'm hungry, let me tell you about the last things that I noticed that I wasn't expecting as I roamed the aisles of Harbor Freight. The last thing that I wanted to point out is I was quite impressed with the painting and stain application tools as well as the air compressor tools as they had quite a variety. So this may be all great information, but did I actually buy anything? Well, the truth is I actually spent over $100 and that's only because they overcharged me for one item. So for just over $100, I was able to purchase 16 items. Now there's probably some other things that I would have purchased, however, I just don't have a need for them right now. Let's take a look at what I got. So one of the things that I was most impressed with at Harbor Freight was their clamp selection. And as we all know, you can never have too many clamps. Let me show you four of the clamps that I purchased. Now the first thing that I purchased are these four quick clamps that have a six inch capacity that are made by Pittsburgh. Now these seem to be a very high quality and each one of these are $3.29 a piece. Now you all know that I'm very partial to Bessie. In fact, this is my preferred clamp. However, you can purchase four of these quick clamps for the price of one of these. So if we compare these two clamps, you can see they have a very similar design. They both have the quick clamp feature as well as two large jaws for clamping. Now the Bessie does have a little bit more comfortable handle, however the Pittsburgh really isn't that bad. Both of these clamps can also be used as a spreader. I hardly know her. 
Now the Bessie's got a very easy way to unattach the jaw and reattach it. The Pittsburgh has got a little knob on the other side that you unscrew to unattach the jaw and reattach it. So even though these clamps don't have the Bessie name on them, if I can get four of these for the price of one Bessie, these may be my new go-to clamp. However, only time's gonna tell. So now that I've shown you four of the items that we got, let's take a look at this next item. This is very similar, however, this thing is a long guy. So in my shop right now, the largest quick clamp that I have is this 24 inch quick clamp made by DeWalt. And this costs about $35. So when I saw essentially the same clamp made by Pittsburgh with a 36 inch capacity, I knew I needed to get it. In fact, I knew I needed to get two of these. These are only $8.99 a piece and I could have gotten four of these for the price of one of those DeWalt's. And just look at that extra capacity. This is gonna give me an extra 12 inches for a quarter of the price. Now these 36 inch Pittsburgh clamps have the exact same features as those six inch clamps. They just have more capacity. And just like those six inch clamps, these can also be used as spreaders. You simply unscrew the jaw and attach it in the opposite direction. However, it's not as easy to do as these DeWalt clamps, which you simply press the button and reattach that clamp. So even though these Pittsburgh clamps may not be as easy to use as those DeWalt clamps, they have the same sturdy construction. And if I can get four of these for the price of one of those DeWalt's, I'm gonna buy some of these. So 36 inches should give me the capacity I need to do those larger glue ups, but I wanted to go bigger way bigger. So I've had my eye on these Rockler Surefoot clamps that go from 24 inches, 36 inches, 48 inches, and 60 inches. However, they're quite expensive. For a 60 inch one, they cost $54.99 each. So when I saw similar bar clamps available at Harbor Freight for a fraction of the price, I thought I'd give them a try. And that's when I bought these two 60 inch aluminum bar clamps made by Pittsburgh once again. Now are these bar clamps gonna be as high quality as those Rockler clamps? Absolutely not. However, they're only $17.99 a piece, which beats that $54.99 price. So one thing I wanted to test with this clamp is to see if it bows at all. And here I've got a 48 inch piece of two x four and I've got this thing clamped down all the way. And you can see there's absolutely no bow in the actual clamp. So on one end of the clamp, it's got an unadjustable standard screw jaw. Along the length of the clamp, it's got little divots that allow you to adjust the other side of the jaw. The other side of the jaw is fully adjustable and it's got a little metal tab that falls into those divots. Once you find your desired width, you simply lock it into place. If you need to move it, you simply squeeze this tab and you can adjust it back. So as you can see, this is a very easy to use clamp. Now I'm hoping that this clamp will complement some of my bar clamps when I'm doing those large tabletop glue ups. And once again, for about a third of the price of those Rockler clamps, for me, it's worth giving this clamp a try. So for the time being, I think I've got my six, 36 and 60 inch clamping capacities covered for a bit. Now let's move on to the next thing that I actually purchased. And I purchased these next four items to help me out with some jigs. So this next item actually doesn't have any cost savings as you can purchase similar items on amazon.com for about the same price. In fact, this is one of the items that they actually overcharge me for. So the next four items that I purchased are these toggle clamps. Now toggle clamps are great for jigs, whether you're creating a tapering jig or you wanna hold a small piece down on your crosscut sled, these things will do the trick. So these toggle clamps cost about $6 a piece and there's two different types of toggle clamps here. On the right hand side, I've got a vertical toggle clamp and this allows you to secure your workpiece when the handle is in the vertical position. On the left hand side, I've got a horizontal toggle clamp, which does the same thing with the handle in the horizontal position. For me, the purchase of these toggle clamps was not about saving some money, but being able to walk out of the store that day with a set of toggle clamps. Now they had a ton of these and they will always have these in stock. So if you need some toggle clamps same day and you don't want to wait on Amazon, Harbor Freight's the place to go. So as you can tell from what I've purchased so far, you can tell that I was really impressed with the types of clamps they had available at Harbor Freight. Before we move on to our next item, I ask you to do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, as it really does help out this small woodworking channel. Now let's move on to our next item. So the next thing that I purchased is something that I've never seen available at a hardware store before. Maybe you have, so if you have, leave a comment and let me know. And that's rare earth magnets. 
So typically in the past, I've always ordered rare earth magnets from Amazon.com, and these really aren't that much cheaper. However, I was just surprised that they had them available. And just like those toggle clamps, you're not going to be saving any money by purchasing rare earth magnets from Harbor Freight. However, you will be able to walk out of the store that day with some in your pocket. And that's why I purchased these. This is a 10 piece set for just $2.99. Now if you go to Amazon, you could probably buy a lot more magnets for a cheaper price, but I really don't need 100 rare earth magnets. And I guess that's one thing that I learned by going to Harbor Freight, is there's a lot of things that aren't available at other stores that you might find at this store. And that brings us to our next item, which was another item that I was actually surprised to see at Harbor Freight. Let's take a look at it. So the next item I found was a 12 inch flush cut saw. And this is something that I really wasn't expecting to find at Harbor Freight. And this 12 inch flush cut saw was $7.99. Now I found the exact same flush cut saw on Amazon for a little over $15. So you're gonna save about 50% on this saw. But none of that really matters if it doesn't do what it's supposed to. So let's take it out of the packaging and see if we can flush cut a dowel. So here I've got a 3 8 inch walnut dowel into a piece of walnut. Let's use this saw and see how it does. And that worked no problem. In fact, that even worked better than a lot of my Japanese flush trim saws. So I'm super stoked about this one. It's got a very flexible blade and it's even got a little notch in the top of it so you can hang it on your wall. And you may or may not have noticed, but I used my 6 inch Pittsburgh clamps to hold that walnut down. So we've only got a couple more items to take a look at. This next item I purchased because it's something I don't have yet. And for $2.99, I just couldn't pass it up. So this item is the tea bevel. This is something that I've been wanting to buy for a long time. And when I saw the price on this, I just knew I had to have it. In fact, this thing is 70% cheaper than the exact same tea bevel that's available on amazon.com. So let's take a quick look at some of the features of this simple little tool. So there's not a whole lot to talk about with this tool, but I did want to mention that it does have inches on one side and centimeters on the other. It also has a level at the very end of it, as well as a locking knob that allows you to adjust your angle and lock it down by twisting the knob. So I'm super excited to have this little tea bevel in my inventory now so that I can figure out all those angles I need. So now let's take a look at the last item I purchased at Harbor Freight. This one's going to blow your mind. So this next item gave me a little bit of disappointment when I got it home and opened the package. And that's a 12 inch stainless steel ruler. Now there's really only one reason why I was disappointed with this ruler when I got it home. And that's because it has a cork backing. Now I purchased this ruler to actually help me with sharpening things like chisels and plane blades. So in order to flatten out the back of a new chisel or the back of a new plane blade, there's a method called the Charlesworth method. And this uses a stainless steel ruler to raise the back of your blade up. However, with that cork backing, I won't be able to use it for this method, but I will be able to use this for project layout. So with that cork backing, this will allow me to place my ruler on things like wood or paper and not have my ruler slide on me. So I guess for only two bucks, not all that money was wasted. So for $112 before taxes, I'm pretty pleased with everything that I got from Harbor Freight. Now let me share some of my final thoughts. So this being my first time at Harbor Freight after woodworking for a number of years, I'll have to say I was pleasantly surprised with what they had to offer. This is a store that I wish I would have found a few years back when I first started collecting tools. Although today, after having most of the tools I need for my shop, I don't foresee myself going there to buy things like power tools. I do see myself going there, however, to buy things like consumables. But all in all, I'm super pleased with my first visit to Harbor Freight. It's just a little bit too far out of my neighborhood to make it a frequent trip. However, I did enjoy my first time going. Well, thanks for joining me today on my first trip to Harbor Freight. If you have a Harbor Freight near you, I suggest you check it out as you may find a few diamonds in the rough there. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. Until next time, take care as always.